Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I'm Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You now in the den. So, guys, this is my review recap for Love at the Locker. Running from Love, y'all. Season 5, Episode 10. <sighs> y'all, we got Brittany finally getting on her dag on... You know, getting out of here, making her call, getting on in that car to leave with her $700 to go find her some crap. Okay, we got Andy talking about, I don't understand, I don't know what I'm wrong. We got Donna ceasing her opportunity, child. She said, okay, Melissa out here playing games. She don't want to be bothered no more. Guess what? We got some dental hygienist over here that can help you out, boo. I'm about to give you the hookup. Lord, we got freaking Sheree putting Anthony to the test and feeling like I don't know if he's going to be able to handle things. I love this man so much. He does so much for me and I want to be with him. We also got Chelsea seeing like she out here lying. But is she really lying? Because do I really have to tell you about my money on the one hand? Is that really your business or your concern? On the other hand, Louis, I been said you need to stay the hell home with your damn child and spend time with her. Okay. And, of course, we end up spending, child, the whole episode with Janome running around crying about Red and the fact that he got these other pictures and he's right in her damn face. I'm sorry, Joy, but you must be blind as shit, girl, because I would have saw him. She literally drove up to where he was and then he ended up going by. We already knew Red wasn't trying to be out here being no devoted husband and father. You know, he done been locked up since he was 20, 30 now, and he want to see what's out here in these streets. As he say, you know, so his royal oats, okay? And so um, that's what he apparently did, child. And I doubt very much that his nasty ass used the rubber. But, you know, as we proceed, child, moving right along swiftly and professionally, let's go ahead and get into this. Break it on down. Take it from the top. You know how we do. So, y'all... It wasn't much to this episode at all, so this review ain't gonna be long. I don't know why we stretched it out for like what an hour and, and almost forty minutes, and next week is the season finale, and that's supposed to be almost two hours. You know, we gonna go ahead and get Sheree and um, <sighs> child. Sheree and Anthony out the way, you know, she's sitting here running up the stairs. Come on, Anthony. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, you got to beat this dag on time. OK, you know, you had a curfew and he just walking, taking his time, get upstairs and say he needs to go ahead and charge his dag on, you know, <laughs> device that's on his freaking ankle, his ankle monitor. And she's just like, well, I love him so much. And he helps me so much. And, and it kills me how she was like, I threw this party for you. And I really wanted you to enjoy yourself. I wanted this to be the best for you. But none of your friends showed up. And he's still telling her how she did such a great job. And he's thankful for it. You know, I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Okay. And then we yawn and we sleepy. We tired. All right. And so later she is like doing these, you know, tests on him. You know, she's that type of person that like to be very organized, have things planned out, know where things is going to be going. You know, we trying to prepare him for if he have interviews, what type of questions, what type of answers we giving, you know, making sure that your resume is in type and Anthony's attitude is what Anthony attitude always is since we've been seeing him is very nonchalant is very like as a matter of fact and I don't really give a damn type of attitude I don't understand why Sheree is all of a sudden getting in her feelings today and feeling like you know if he's not going to be a certain type of person then I may need to rethink this because I'm used to things being very structured when it comes to me and my son and it doesn't really seem like that is the type of thing that he is trying to give me right now and um you know i don't know how that's going to impact our relationship and what we have to look forward to going forward if that's what he's going to be doing and it's like uh he's pretty much came out with that attitude since he's been out so i don't know why it was like if this was the first time that she was seeing it she wasn't liking the way that he was answering the questions and she's like you know are you sure that you're getting this and he's like yep and then she was like you know pretty much doing a mock interview with him when then she's saying that it's really not going well you know you can't go into an interview with the I don't give a damn attitude like, you know it's like oh you got some nerve well maybe he not gonna be that way with the people when he go into the interview maybe he just you know being that way with you because it's you I don't know okay but 
she was saying she probably wouldn't give him a job and she's like the feedback that she would give him is for him to look into the person's eyes, you know, when she's talking to them, when he's talking to them, which is true, you know, um, she didn't feel like he was doing that. You can't be swinging back and forth in the chair and all of that. You got to be steady. And, you know, she's saying she do this for a living and she's observing and he's going whatever. OK, so everything that she's saying or whatever. And basically, she just was kind of upset about it and feeling like she was taking it more serious than he was. But again, this has been Anthony's attitude since he came home. OK, and if y'all don't know, he was already arrested again since he got out. So there's that. OK, now moving on from numb child, Brittany and Andy, get them out the way. I'm glad that's over with. I hope we never, ever see them again in life. I have never disliked anybody more than I freaking dislike this damn lady. Of course, we know as soon as she got the money, she basically, you know, outside begging people for the phones when she could have just as easily asked Andy to use his phone or either got her damn phone that she left on his freaking car seat out of the car. No, we gonna do dramatics. We gonna sit here and be begging people on the side of the street. Everybody is basically saying no, they don't have no phone for her to use. You know, Andy then finally brings his behind outside to her and she's asking him and he's even asking her like, where's your phone? Oh, I left it on the, you know, in the car on the seat. So he's like, and by the way, your daughter called. She picks up the phone, calls her, says, can you tell grandma to please come pick me up? They asking like, well, what happened? You know, oh, nothing. I'll tell you about it when you get here. I just basically want to go. So at this point, Andy starts packing up his stuff. Like, I don't need to be here then. Like, I literally wasted my time. Let me go ahead and pack up my stuff and get the hell up out of here too. You know, what am I staying here for? And, um, you know, at first he's saying he don't care and that he would have never pictured it, you know, going this way and whoop de whoop de whoop pretty much what you would be expecting him to say. And, you know, he drives over to where she is and she's, I know this is not Andy driving up. Is that him pulling up? I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to see him. So childish. Like you couldn't even look him in his damn face and be like, well, this didn't work out. I thought it was going to be one thing. It's not, which whatever, that's bull crap too. But you least could have said something. The fact that she got the money and then literally was like, I'm just going. I, Andy's so much better than me because I would have been like, okay, well, you could give me back my damn money. Seriously. But nonetheless, you know, all he did was pack up his stuff and then he drove up to her again where she was there and was saying, you know, can you get in the car? Can we talk? Can we just still try to you know, walk away together, whatever the case may be. Can it just be me and you? And she's saying, no, it cannot. You know, she's going on about her business. And supposedly when she's talking, you know, she just want her mom to be here. And he says, all right. And he got in the car and drove up. And the story she's telling us, even though we all been clearly watching this whole damn time, is that, you know, oh, I couldn't believe nothing that he said. And, you know, um, he kept lying to me and he wasn't what I thought he was. And, you know, um, every time I was saying like, what happened with this and that with the money, he was making up excuses, but yet you got the damn money. You got the money, girl. You got the money. You got $500 that you claim you gave to your kids. I don't believe that. And then you got another 500. So you got a thousand out of the, you know, 1200 or whatever, because the car wasn't in your name. You had an attitude because the pancakes was made. You had an attitude because the phone wasn't in your name. You had an attitude. And, you know, he still was trying to say like, oh, I don't understand how she feels. And, you know, I've never been addicted to nothing, but I definitely have been in a relationship where there's addiction and I know how it could be anxiety and things can be high and different things of that nature to understand from her point of view. But I just don't understand where all of this came from and just, you know, leaving like that feels really crazy to me or whatever right and a lot of times when you do leave like that is for you to go and use and you know i wanted to just make sure that it really was her mom that was coming to pick her up and it was so once he seen that it was her mom that came you know he just basically was ready to drive off but he said that at the end of the day he still love her and he hoped that she do what's best for her and her kids or whatever right and he's never setting foot in that vicinity again i was laughing when they were saying like oh you know what if she comes back he pretty much was like yeah nah she ain't coming back 
And then she talking about something. I'm really stressed out, but I feel empowered. I'm glad that I stood up for myself. I don't understand what you stood up for besides using this man for his damn money that you already know you was using for. And she's like, every time she would have a failed relationship, she usually would turn back to drugs. But this time she didn't. And so, you know, she feels really good about that. And she's like, bye, Andy. And I'm still going to be okay. I hope you are. For the sake of your kids. But girl, the behavior you displayed while you was up here was just freaking disgusting. Okay. Now, moving on from there. We had um, Key Rock and Brittany. This is another one that you know what it is. You know what it is. Like, granted, I will give you the credit that initially Key Rock even admitted himself that he was not, that he did say he wanted kids when he was locked up and maybe he probably should not have said that. And since he's been out, it's pretty much been like, yeah, no, that's not really what I want. What if I never want that? You know, he's saying he is talking with his goddaughter on the phone and she's like, I love how good you are, you know, with kids. And that shows me that you could be a good father. And that makes me feel good in reference to that and she folding up the clothes and he making jokes about how he could join her and help her with the folding or whatever the case may be and she's like nah I'm good and so when he's hanging up the phone from talking he's like yeah I'm a good godfather there's no doubt about that and you know it's kind of easy for me to be a godfather whatever the case may be but that's different than being a father and having to be in a child's life every day 24 7 365 days a week and she's like yeah but of course, it's, again, it's not going to be something we're going to do right now, but I'm still thinking that we would get married one day and that we would have kids. I want to have a family. This is my dream. This is how I see us. This is the way I want it to be. And he's basically like, OK, but there's plenty of married couples that don't necessarily get married. You know, I mean, don't necessarily have kids or whatever. Right. We don't have to have kids. And that's not my plan right now. And I don't need to plan that right now. I don't have to plan that right now. And she's like, yeah, but you can plan things for later. Because, again, she's just re-mentioning everything she's already mentioning about them being a non-conventional couple. And he's basically like, you keep bringing it up or whatever. And she was like, I'm just trying to have you process everything that um you know we need to go through and he was like I'm not trying to process this like it's just not for me it's not something that I want I'm just now coming home that's not what I want to be putting on my mind right now and she's like well I'm telling you that I want a baby and she was like it's really irritating me that you're making it seem like you don't ever want to have kids and then he finally says what if I don't and it's like this should have been discussed point blank period like you keep giving these little breadcrumbs here and there oh well I don't know it may not be that way it may not go that way I may not want to do that I don't want to do it right now because I'm young so now Brandy has an attitude and she's saying it's too much and she go running down the damn stairs crying and in her damn feelings obviously nine times out of ten this relationship is not gonna freaking work we are finally realizing that we are on two separate pages we don't want the same daggone things or if we did want it before now it has basically changed and we're looking for something different so Brittany, you more than likely gonna have to find somebody else if you want to think about a daggone baby because it ain't gonna be with no damn key rock okay now, moving on from there, we basically had um, Louie at the Dagon Dentist. Come to find out some kind of way the dentist's office is having this freaking horrible leak or whatever, right? And so unless we could get somebody to come and to fix it, more than likely we're going to have to reschedule the appointment, you know. And um, I'm sorry, even before that happened... He actually thought Melissa was going to be coming down and was going to be going with him to the dentist. It was the typical conversations that we have with him and his mom where she's like, yeah, you need to find another girl. You know, what kind of girl that don't like your mother? And he's saying it's not that she don't like you. It's that she feels like, I, you know, pretty much depend on you too much. And she don't be liking the way you talk to her is a difference. But when it's all said and done, this is my woman. This is who I choose to be with. You know, she's coming down here to go with me to the dentist yada 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 right and we eating food and we saying how good it is and so of course he can't even have a conversation on the phone without his mother putting her two cents in you're hearing her in the background so he's saying let him go outside and talk we get on the, a video call with um melissa and she is saying 
you know, I'm so tired. I just made it home and I'm so sorry, but I have to work. Okay. That's the story. So I'm not going to be able to come. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry. Like, damn, it's been a minute since I seen you. I was really looking forward to it, but I can't be mad at you that you can't come. If you can't come, you can't come. I, you know, there's nothing I could do about that. So she's like, yeah, so you're going to have to be there all by yourself. And then he's like, well, I guess technically. And she's like, well, what does that mean? Technically, he was like, uh, well, I remember I'm still here with my mother. And that sets her off because she does not want him to have any help for him, his mother. If he's not going to be able to have her there with him, then she wants to feel like he's struggling and he's by himself and he don't have anybody. And it's like, come on, Melissa, it don't work like that either. Even though Louie mama is a pain in the ass, she do too damn much. You know, of course, the whole time she here freaking fixing up the damn couch. So come on, let me fix the bed up for him so that when he come back in from the dentist, he can lay there. But how are you going to be mad about something that you're not there for? And then later when we get the call, when he's at the dentist, after finding out that this whole thing may have to be rescheduled, we finding out you lying. Like, why would you even answer your phone and tell on your own damn self if you said you was supposed to be at work? He stepped outside for a minute and he like, well, what's going on? What's good? Oh, nothing. You know, um, I'm not actually at work. And it's like, so why the hell did you tell me you was at work if you wasn't going to be at work? Like, are we even going to discuss the fact that you lied to me? And had it been the other way around, how upset you would be having me lie to you? Like, what are we really doing here? And it's like, oh, well, I'm still paying for it, even though I'm not there. And he basically was trying to say that if she wanted to, you know, go ahead and cancel it or if she wanted to, you know, um, like I forget the damn word that I'm looking for y'all, but just have like the charge reversed in terms of paying for it or whatever that she could do that. And then she's basically saying like, Oh, well, you know, I think I'm done with this and I don't know what to say because you always still find a way to have your mother there and have her do things for you. What are you really doing there? And he's like, well, what are you really doing? You know, she's saying how she's taking care of her house and her responsibilities. And he's like, I'm doing the same thing here. And I thought I was trying to get out there to Jersey. So where the hell you at? You know, no, you're not doing the same thing as me and you're still not being independent. And now we're back to, you know, I think I may have made a mistake with this whole situation. Yeah, you did, girl. You uh, you been made a mistake. OK, from the time you had on that damn cheerleading outfit we all knew you was making a mistake except for you but you know it was then it going to i decided not to come and all of this and it's like okay so where does that leave us what are you trying to do are you breaking up with me right now you know we talking about like this is a damn break period right now or something so of course you ain't gotta have um you know, tell Louie mama twice. She don't like her anyway. Don't want her to be with him anyway. You know, he's saying he don't understand or whatever. And all of this is because he actually still had um his mom come with him. But if he needed somebody to drive him, I don't know if he has to get any type of anesthetics or anything like that. But normally, if you do, somebody will have to come with you to the appointment anyway. So if it's not you, then I would assume that it's going to be his mother. You would be pissed off. It was another girl. So it was like, I just don't get the point of this child. A lot of these storylines, I just feel like. We TV is making up as they go, to be honest, because it's just like, for what? Okay. But of course, his mom was telling him to leave his options open. You know, you never know. And then she ended up going over to the daggone desk and she over here like, you know, if she want to um, make a damn connection, she telling the girl, oh, I have a question for you. Come to the other side. How are you doing all this? Nice to meet you, Michelle. I'm Donna Louie's mom, you know, and she said, oh, that's my grandmother's name. And she was like, oh, what a what a wonderful world that is, child. You can <laughs> wait to freaking see how happy she was here and that. And she was like saying, oh, I'm going to get you a cup of coffee and this and that. And, um, you know, where you from? I'm from California. We making all this small talk or whatever the case may be. And she got a dog. I said, child, not trying to be funny, but the way she had that damn hairstyle, she looked like a damn dog, <laughs> like one of them little <laughs> small dogs. I forget the daggone name of them. But anyway, y'all. Um, she doing a damn love connection with them, right? And I can't, you know, we can't say we shocked with that because we know that she did not want, um, you know, him to be with Melissa and so they said outside and talk for a minute and I'm like really Donna I'm thinking you going to talk to her about something that got to do with the damn appointment or whatever but no okay 
Child. Anyway, moving on from there, we have Chelsea and Mikey. Again, I feel like now we're just making up scenarios as we go. Apparently, you know, Mikey's out here with the guy that he had been locked up with. You know, we saying that we did time together. We had each other backs. When I was sick, he was the one that was calling the guard and making sure that everything was taken care of. We have a back and forth between Chelsea talking with her dad versus him talking with his friend and how her dad is perceiving him in a certain way. And I get it. In the beginning, I was really saying, like, I could understand where Pops is coming from. I could understand him being leery and worried because obviously we found out about the history of the relationships that Chelsea has had. But in my opinion, from what we see, at least so far, Mike does not fit in the category of these guys. I think that her dad would actually be very happy with him and like him. However, comma, I think that we didn't know what the hell we was going to be getting with Chelsea. And I think this may not work out either. OK, because, you know, she's sitting here telling the dad what a good guy he is, that he's a good father, that he gets a good on good with her son. Of course, he's saying he needs to see these things for himself. Then Mikey's talking about some. Yeah, he think I'm a bad guy and that, you know, I went to jail for you know, taking away people's lives, deleting them because I have a teardrop and a friend talk about some, oh, no, really? What kind of stuff is that? I'm like, well, that is what's known. I mean, I'm just saying, okay? And, you know, they talking about how the correction officers really didn't care when it came to him being sick and all of that kind of stuff. So he's asking him if he's excited about going to see Chelsea. And he's like, yeah, I am. But the only thing that's making me kind of leery, you know, of course, I am nervous, but I'm also kind of trying to see where exactly we're standing at and he's like well what and he was like yeah with the money situation so he's like well what's going on with the money situation and when he say that I'm thinking about the whole fact that Chosa had you know said that her SSI got stopped and you know food stamps got stopped the money she get from her dad got stopped and you know all of these hard trials she going through but no it seems to be the complete opposite of that he's saying how she have five thousand dollars and he's trying to figure out where the hell did she just get there from just like that and that it caused a whole big argument between them and she had the only attitude and she didn't want to answer him and she never wanted to tell him where it came from and he's like oh he's still she still didn't tell you and he's like no i still don't know you know and he you see a clip of when they're on the video call and he's basically like i can't do this and he hangs up the phone on her when she's not answering and he's saying you know that she claims she made this money from selling things offline and he was like i don't believe that you're not gonna make that kind of money selling things online i, I mean it depends on what she's selling online i don't know but the way he's looking at it is she could possibly be doing something that's illegal and that's the only way you making that fast money like that and of course with him just being out of prison he don't want to go and move to where she is and take the chance of being around something that could possibly be illegal and get him into trouble so that's why he's asking where it came from and that he don't feel like she's being fully honest about it I can understand that concept too but I can't say that I'm mad at her for not like telling him every little thing honestly you shouldn't have even told him that you had the damn five thousand dollars girl okay some things you got to keep to yourself <laughs> you ain't got to say every little tiny thing but of course now this is another conflict between them you know um and so then we have this moment where you know, the dad is like, I will see what's going on with him. I'll check him out for myself or whatever, because, you know, you choose some bad guys. All the guys you've been with have been bad. It's been one thing or another with them. And he's saying how he had to go hunt one down one time, you know, try to anyway, look for them. But he never found them or whatever the case may be. Right. And so basically, you know, at one point he's chilling with his daughter in the park. And again, this little girl just throws my heart. She's so freaking adorable, you know, such a good head on her shoulders, so smart. And, you know, of course, on the one hand, it's like we happy to be here with her. We happy to be spending time with her. But we also are looking forward to going to see, 
you know, um, Chelsea, but we also have his daughter saying, you know, I miss you. I love you. You're the best dad in the world. And she was like, are you going to be asking her to marry you? And it's like, oh, I don't know. No, I'm not asking her right now. You know, do you want us to get married? And she's like, no. And he's like, why? Like, why wouldn't you want to? And she was like, I don't want any of my parents getting married. You know, that's understandable. She's still a little kid. And, you know, she has not got to spend this this time with her dad either you know he's been locked up and he's been away from her and she wants his attention with her and I can respect that and I can understand that and I honestly think that's where it should be I did not know that he had a child until when we last saw her and so I feel like it should not even be a thing of him going to move in with Chelsea and get serious with her and definitely not sit there and be invested into her kids without doing that same thing with his own okay I think that should be his first priority and Chelsea son her kids should be her first priority so of course she want to be able to come to his house every weekend and he was like when I come back I'll pick you up you know I'll spend the whole week with you or whatever the case may be you know he don't want to let his kid down she means a lot to him or whatever the case may be and he said you know he might pick her up that very um evening as soon as he get back and he don't want to make any more mistakes and that could possibly cause her any heartache and she was saying she would like that and he's like okay cool you know what I'm saying like we got a date I would like that too I really hope that that Mikey does make a child all right and I believe last but wait Yes, I did talk about them. Just trying to remember. So I believe last but not least, y'all, is just basically them. Uh, <coughs> Wait, did I talk about you know me and Red, y'all? I ain't even going to lie to y'all. I do not remember. I feel like I did. I talked about how she was following him around, right? The whole daggone episode. Boo-hoo-hoo crying. She was mad that he had pictures. You know, we get upstairs in the room. She throwing the things on the bed. She had left him and jumped out the car. She was so upset. You know, oh, your mom had told me you were still talking to these girls and getting calls from them. You know, they overreacting at the fact that um, I want you to go with me. I get that they love you and they your family and they want you here. But I got to get back to my child and I also got to get back, you know, for work. And he's like, yeah, I get that. But then we start getting emotional and we start crying when we like, um, yeah, and what's up with the fact that she was saying you was getting money from these people? And he's like, you know, I did what I had to do and I'm not going to lie. I got these pictures. Now, I don't know why I thought the pictures was going to be like on a phone or a tablet or something. I wasn't expecting it to be like physical <laughs> pictures with photo albums and stuff but she's like pictures what you mean pictures naked pictures pictures with people showing they butt and their titties and stuff i can't believe this you have hurt me so bad you have destroyed me boo hoo 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 and i'm like joy calm your behind down girl didn't you admit to sleeping with three different damn men where at the end of the day neither one of y'all really owed each other anything because you don't know this man he was locked up and talking to whoever he could talk to to get whatever conversation he could from people other than people that he damn locked up with and you was out here lonely in the streets doing whatever the hell you was doing with your different damn booze okay and that's how you got just us i don't understand what we cried and getting dramatic for and we literally spent most of the episode walking around crying and being like you know he has hurt me so bad i don't understand this and i can't deal with this and i can't go through this and i don't want to you know be with this and i'm not going to tolerate this and i'm going to leave and whoop de whoop de whoop so then we know we calling him and we gonna go out and look for him or whatever and it literally was was like he's by the damn um like car wash gas station or whatever and he's sitting here chilling in the car you know begging to put hickeys on this freaking chick neck that's supposed to be his best friend and it's like jesus christ like how old are you you know and he's saying how janome is doing too much she's overreacting she's acting like a warden you know he said he gonna go downstairs for a minute just to be by himself and to smoke a cigarette but of course we know he know janome should definitely know the we tv people that's following what the cameras know that that's not what he's doing he going downstairs to see bestie you know she talking about oh he's dropping all this on me and he wants it to be okay it's not okay um and so when he gets downstairs you know 
She talking about, he talking about, can you pull up on me? I'm hella, you know, irritated and this and that. She too clingy and I'm not on that and this and that. So now you even telling your friend, okay, different complaints that you got with her. And he was like, um, you know, I just want to be able to be who, you know, where I want to be. And it's crazy, man. I just want to have friends and all of this. And so she's still upstairs crying talking about someone i cheated which i still don't understand how i was cheating but okay child you don't sit there that's why you crying and feeling all guilty because you actually feel like you cheated on this man when i don't understand how it was a cheat so nonetheless he met julie at a damn party a long time ago and she really did become his best friend she coming jumping up in his arms we hugging you know i miss you so much and all of that oh i like you here i see you i see you you know and so we ride over to where this gas station is at and we sit in there, you know, talking. Meanwhile, Janome is calling him and he like, look, she already started calling me. You know, you supposedly supposed to be leaving. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, this is a damn mess. And she's like, she's here. And she was like, wait a minute. She's right here. I'm not trying to be here and she here, whatever. But of course, this is all the thrill for him. You know, oh, I don't care. I'm outside. I'm free. I'm out of here now. And you know, we chilling with her, with her, you know, we together, we gonna be happy and whoop de whoop de whoop, right? So it was very disrespectful. I said, damn, Red, you at least could have went somewhere damn else. Now, mind you, she in the hotel room crying for a minute. She calling on the phone. He not answering. She comes down and she literally drives to where they at to the point that Red is like, oh, shit, wait, that's her. And she's like, she's here. And he's like, yeah, go, go, go. I don't know how the hell she missed them. Then she goes and like pulls over and it goes inside of a parking spot. And then literally, I don't know if that's just the way the weed TV cameras was trying to make it look, but it literally looked like she was walking right behind. They was walking right behind her damn car, right past her to go in the building. And I said, how the hell did you know me ain't catch all of this? Please tell me how she ain't catch it, honey, because I would have seen him from a mile away. But nonetheless, she just was complaining like he thinks he don't do anything wrong. You know, he never sees what he does. No, it's not that he don't think he don't do anything wrong, girl. He going to do what he want to do and he don't care. And he expect for you to just still be sitting there. That's all. So she finally gets it in her mind that that's it. I'm not going for this no more. You know, he had Bestie drop him off over by his mother's way. And she basically drives up with him sitting outside on the porch and is telling him to go ahead and get his stuff out the car. She not playing no games with him. She want his stuff gone and he's sitting there. Don't do this. You know, it's not like that. Open the doors. Don't embarrass me. Don't have me begging for you out here in the street with my neighbors looking and whoop de whoop de whoop. And she's like, no, I'm done. Just take your stuff out or whatever. You know, he tried for a minute to beg a little bit but at least for now it wasn't working she was saying nope she not taking her home with him she don't want to take him back home she don't want nothing to do with him she don't want him around her son and he's like are you serious right now and she was like yep i sure the hell am and of course it was you know what we seen in the preview over and over and over again with her dumping his bags and the side of the damn road and driving off and he talking about some oh well usually you know she wouldn't stick to her guns i couldn't believe when i seen the car driving off because normally she wouldn't be that way and i could get through to her y'all kill me because y'all don't know what y'all normally are because it's the first time that y'all being around each other you know she's saying this was the way he was all the time when he was locked up but then with other things, I can't believe he acting like that. Because y'all don't know each other, girl. And I hope you did take your ass home, Janome. And I hope you do take care of your child. And I also hope you get some daggone therapy. But that was the episode, y'all. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about this, what you liked, what you didn't like. Did we pretty much all know and see how all of these things was going to play out? Was we surprised and shocked by anything? <laughs> okay, let me know. If I left anything, I'll put that in the comments. Give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you were so inclined. Till next time, y'all. Toodaloo.